Last week, Huntsville shut down. Bitter cold temperatures in the single digits and a staggering maybe half inch of ice brought the city to a halt. Now, if you're from the north of the Mountain West, you're probably laughing at us. It's true, we don't know how to drive in icy conditions. But you know what? You don't know how to drive in pollen. So anyway, something pretty awesome happened. I felt the presence of God more intensely. Not, not that God isn't everywhere all the time. It's just that when you get a reprieve from the constant push of the now and pull of the next, he seems more present. And he's no nearer or bigger or omni-whatever than any other time. But you can see him more clearly. He doesn't change. When things slow down, we do. In Mark 6, 31, Jesus turned to his disciples and he said, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. He ordered this retreat, Mark says, because so many people were coming and going, they didn't, they didn't even have a chance to eat. So many people, so much coming and going, so little rest. Even before cell phones and the 24-hour news cycle and the incessant nag of social media, Jesus' disciples needed a Sabbath. Now, to be honest, most of the time, I live like a sprinter trying to get around the track as fast as possible. I rush about angling to find the shortest line at the grocery or the fastest lane on the road, fuming at the slow pokes who get in my way, watching the calendar, racing the clock. But life is not a sprint. It's a journey, a long one. It's headed for a sacred place. And people on a journey are not in a hurry. They take care of business, of course, and they move along. But they know that hurry is no friend to people who have many miles ahead of them. The destination sets the pace for the journey. And because it's sacred, this is not just a trip. It's a pilgrimage. And the people with whom they travel are not just seatmates, they're companions. There are going to be days and weeks and sometimes even seasons when responsibilities just seethe under a pile of unexpected urgencies. In busyness, though, the twin sins of imagined indispensability and overconfident self-regard are crouching at the door and desire to have us. Just as Jesus called his disciples away from the coming and the going, we too must step back now and then. And oddly, stepping back to rest, to listen, to pray, does not lengthen our journey. It strengthens us for it. Not a sermon, just a thought.